It took me six months to finish Persona 5 Royal. I started the game back in the summer and got distracted with some other stuff along the way. But during the Christmas holidays, I used all of that free time to jump right back into the game where I left off. I didn't drop the game because I wasn't enjoying it, exactly the opposite really. When it comes to games like Persona 5 that span roughly 100 hours, I really need to be in the mood to enjoy that kind of experience. I want to be able to enjoy every second without getting bored or distracted, and for those 6 months, I kept putting the game off until the time was right. And now, after finishing the game and seeing what it has to offer, it has easily become one of my favourite games of all time. I want to preface this review by stating that I haven't played any of the previous Persona games or anything in the Shin Megami Tensei franchise before this which is something that I plan to fix soon because Persona 5 honestly shocked me with how good it was. You got me. It feels like a game that is so unique in premise, style and execution that it's something that truly feels special to play through. And after all of the games that were released in 2020, for me, this was my game of the year. And I know that Royal is a re-release of a game that came out in 2016, but I, I don't care. It's actually very hard to talk about why this game is so great in only a 10-ish minute review. Liar! So I'm definitely going to be leaving some things out here and there. And at some point in the future, I'll probably make a big video gushing about this game to make up for that. Oh, and I'm also going to avoid talking about the storyline as much as I can, because every little event and interaction in this game with its cast of characters feels so much more special if you don't know anything about it going in. So all the footage you'll see is from the first few hours of the game, and also some non-spoilery combat footage as well. In Persona 5, you take the role of Joker, the leader of the Phantom Thieves. Of course, Joker isn't his real name. Canonically, his real name is Arthur Fleck. Now. Shit, wrong script. <laughs> Joker's real name is actually up to the player, but most of the fandom refers to him as Ren Amamiya, since that's what he's called in the anime adaptation, so we'll just go with that. Anyway, the Phantom Thieves steal the hearts of those that are plain evil and force them to admit their crimes to everyone and atone for what they've done. And as far as premises go, this is a pretty badass one, and I'll get more into it in a little bit. The game does something that typically I kind of hate in most storylines that do this. It uses in medias res and starts our story halfway into the game, as Joker tries to escape from a casino after being chased by dozens of guards. Things don't really go as planned though, and he gets arrested, where he gets interrogated by a prosecutor and forced to explain what he's been doing as a part of the Phantom Thieves. Now, I don't really like this kind of framing in most stories as it's a very jarring way to start anything, since you don't know anything about what's going on. But to be honest, if they had started the game with things like this... All traffic around Shibuya Station is being redirected due to the accident, so drivers should expect jam-packed streets. Oh, come on. I can imagine a lot of people getting bored straight away. The real issue comes from the fact that the game keeps cutting back to this interrogation room anytime something important happens in the storyline which can take you right out of the moment and sometimes it can get very annoying. But anyway, Ren has two lives he lives, one as a phantom thief and the other as a student, and Ren's double life is expertly shown through the gameplay as well. Let's start off by talking about what you'll be doing as a student and teenager on the streets of Tokyo. So as you've probably noticed by now, these numbers in the corner show you the date and time of day. And these are very important things to pay attention to. The game is built around a calendar system where you live out Ren's life day by day, and what you do during the day is up to you. He is a student of course, so a lot of his time is going to be devoted to going to school, leaving his free time up to you to choose how you want to spend it. This system brings so much life to the game, forcing you to make decisions on how best to spend your time before the next big story event happens. In terms of what you can actually do, you can read a book, go to a restaurant, watch a film, shop around for extra gear for phantom thievering, hang out with people that you meet throughout the game, etc, etc. And all of these different activities go towards building different social stats that give you access to new conversations and side quest thingies. And the main reason that you'll want to be doing these outside of the genuinely well-written dialogue is for the perks that you get while being a phantom thief. The main social system at play here is called Confidants. 
As you progress through the game, you'll meet different people that you forge a relationship with, and as you continue to talk to them, you'll increase their confidant rank, giving you access to new abilities and perks depending on who you talk to. For example, the owner of the airsoft shop will eventually let you buy better weapons and armor, and also let you customize your firearms to let you increase their different stats. And if you never bother talking to him, you just won't get to customize your weaponry. So the game makes it pretty obvious that talking to people is important, and this would be extremely boring if the storylines and writing weren't so great. But luckily, they are. Almost every confidant has some interesting problem that they're going through, and the growth that you see as you progress through some of these ranks is some really great stuff. And as I mentioned before, the game works off of a calendar system, and at most, you can only see two people a day, and often, you only have time to meet up with one person in a day. So, progress through these ranks can be time consuming, and you have to plan out when you think the best time to meet up with people actually is. This system would fall apart if its characters weren't interesting, or if the rewards for engaging with them weren't useful. But amazingly, I can say that I found every social link to be engaging, and if I had the time in game, I would have done every one. But that's the catch. There's only so much time in the game, and even though this game can easily end up taking you over 100 hours, there will be social links that you have to sacrifice in order to hang out with another. And there's most likely an optimized way of doing the confidants so that you can get most, if not all of them done, in a single playthrough. But realistically, that's not happening on your first playthrough. But that's only one side to the game. What about the other side? Well, as a phantom thief, you and your fellow party members infiltrate different palaces throughout the game, with each palace representing the evil and distorted desires of whichever target is currently being... Um targeted. And each palace has different mechanics and types of puzzles that you'll be solving in order to progress through them. While there were definitely palaces I preferred and some places I didn't absolutely love, I can say that they were all pretty fun to explore and adventure through in their own ways. As well as palaces, there is also a huge dungeon in the game in the form of mementos, which is a massive network of subway tunnels that seem to go down forever, and as you progress through the game, you'll unlock deeper and harder levels to the dungeon. That sounded a lot better when I wrote it. If you need to grind or get more personas, then this is the place to do it since you have access to it for the vast majority of the game, even when there is no palace target. Oh shit, we haven't even mentioned personas yet! Alright, well, first, let's get into combat. If you've played any turn-based game before, you basically know what's going on here. You have standard attacks, spells, and guarding, but this game throws a couple extra spicy little surprises at you as well. The main goal in a fight is to figure out what type of damage your enemy is weak to, whether that's physical attacks, gunshots, oh yeah, you can whip out a gun and just shoot them if you want, it's badass, or a weakness to a specific element like fire or ice. Once you've figured that out, you can cause the enemy to be in a weakened state where they get staggered. Get all enemies into this state and you've initiated a holdup. From here you can talk to the enemy and get them to join your army of personas. Hang on, we're getting to it. Ask them for an item or just ask them for money. Or you can press this button here and uh, well, just watch. Let's go. Holy shit! The combat in Persona 5 has a really satisfying rhythm to it. It avoids a lot of the problems that other turn-based games have for me when you constantly have battles that can last a couple of minutes, whereas most fights in this game can be finished in under 30 seconds if you know what you're doing, which makes encounters against tougher enemies more interesting as a result. A lot of the boss fights in this game genuinely test how well you've learned the game's mechanics, and we haven't even mentioned Baton Pass yet. Once you've weakened an enemy, the control comes back to the character that just did the attack, and from here, you have two choices. Either use this opportunity to use another attack or an item with that character, or initiate a baton pass, where you high-five your party member and pass the turn over to them. In return, they get increased damage, and if you weaken another enemy, you can baton pass again and again, further increasing the damage. 
And this is a really cool system. A lot of fights become these cool little puzzles where you try to figure out how to get a baton pass across your whole party and getting that max damage buff is a pretty great feeling. And now we get to talk about personas. And the best way to describe what a persona is, it's like a Pokemon, but you know, not a Pokemon. In story terms, a persona is the manifestation of your rebellious desires. In gameplay terms, it's what lets you throw fire at your enemies. Each character has their own unique persona, which has their own type of abilities. But Joker is interesting in this regard, since he can use more than one persona at a time. In combat, you can switch out your persona on the fly, giving him incredible versatility on the battlefield. You get extra personas by recruiting them on the field during holdups. Or you can go to the Velvet Room and fuse two personas together to create a brand new persona that inherits abilities and skills from its, um, donors, I guess you could say? And that isn't all the Velvet Room has to offer. In fact, there are a ton of different things that you can do here, but I'm not going to get into them all here because that's a lot of stuff to talk about. I've managed to get this far in without once talking about the music, and the soundtrack is what manages to pull everything together. The jazzy accompaniment that trades genres for more rock-inspired sounds at times is just awesome to listen to. After over a hundred hours of game time, I was never bored of listening to any of the songs in the soundtrack, which is especially surprising considering how often they reuse the same tracks over and over again, which would be a negative in a lot of other games, but the sheer quality and fun that the music has circumvents a lot of that repetition. Persona 5 Royal is frankly one of the best games I've played in a very long time. And I know that most of my videos on this channel have been fairly negative with a lot of the stuff I've talked about so far, but this is a game that I genuinely love and ranks highly among some of my favorite games of all time. If you haven't played this game yet, I highly recommend it. And if you aren't typically a fan of JRPGs or even games of this general style, do some more research into it because I honestly think it would be a disservice to yourself if you missed out on this game. Alright, um, I'm gonna go and play all of the other Persona games now. So, um, bye!